Well, hi everybody, it's John Jay, and I'm going to talk about something today I don't normally do, officially. Uh, many of you have asked me over the years to talk about um, my fasting routine, and so, interestingly, the only thing to talk about is what I'm eating, right? Because <laughs> I can talk about not eating for two days, but then, that, then I just stop talking, right? So, what I'm going to show you is, when I break my fast, okay, after not eating for usually it's going to be 36 to 48 hours today it just happens to be uh we're heading on 58 hours almost 58 hours of fasting it just worked out that way sometimes it's 48 hours sometimes it's 42 hours you know i, I i'm not very strict in some but i do try to get over 36. Um, anyways so i'm gonna just show you i'm sitting in my favorite restaurant okay but Really, this is my kitchen. So I'm, I have all the things, most of the things that I'm going to eat, and I want to show you and explain what I'm doing. Okay, so I start out with, I'm just going to show you, I have a French press, and it's got some coffee in there, like three big heaping teaspoons, and it just happens to be some Turkish coffee I picked up. It's got cardamom in there. I love cardamom. And... Um, I'm gonna add some maple syrup probably or some honey in there and make it real sweet so it's gonna be really good. So that's a liter of coffee. Um, here is a ground beef. I made this about three years ago and if you look at my label, this is my ingenious you know, labeling method where I don't actually put the date on here because I know what label this is. So roughly this is June of 2020. <laughs> I just know that. But anyways, I don't label everything that way. So this is um, a mason jar, a ball jar of canned ground beef. I'm gonna saute this and I'm gonna make uh, nachos. Okay, I'm gonna make nachos. So these go into a skillet. Uh, I'm gonna cook it in the kitchen. And I like to eat what I have that's available. So the other day I was at Publix and I got, I saw these on sale half price. So I picked up a handful, you know, a big, you know, big group of them. Turns out the reason why they're on sale is because they're not that, you know, they're kind of stale and I kind of don't care, right? I'm just, you know, my favorite thing to do is get a couple of bags of those, um, those uh, tortilla chips. They're fresh and they're, you know, like the restaurant style. I like those, but I don't feel like going to Publix. And so I'm going to pull this out of the pantry. So that's what I have today. And I'm just going to open this up and just, it's going to be nachos, okay? I have um, this again. I got this at Publix. It was on sale, so I got all of them, you know. Uh, so this is all jalapenos. There was nothing in here except jalapenos. So I'm like, okay, I'm gonna buy that. So I just dumped all this on the uh, cutting board and I diced it up real good. So when I saute this ground beef, I'm gonna throw in my uh, jalapenos. I like it spicy. And I have a bowl of uh, spices over there waiting by the stove. I've got garlic, onion, masala, uh, what else? Pepper, some cumin. I don't like cumin, but I put it in there because it's got good minerals or vitamins or whatever. Um, so I'm told. Um, so with my liter of coffee, and you'll see I'm not very organized, but I'm just kind of just showing you how I sit down and uh, break my fast. And I'm, I'm not hungry, but I really want to eat, okay? I'm tired of waiting. So this is the, um, the coffee with the cardamom in it. I'll put a sweetener in here. Uh, usually I don't. Usually I just have black coffee. Um, I like the caffeine out of it, right? It's your best source of caffeine, really. Then I always mix it in with this. So basically, I'm gonna drink this whole thing. I'm gonna eat, drink a whole liter of coffee, this together, with my sweetener. I'm also going to eat this jar of peaches. Okay, this is 24 ounces of peaches. So I like to have fresh fruit. You know, sometimes I get, you know, raspberries. I love those raspberries, blueberries, anything fresh. I also eat dried fruit. I'll bring that out and show you some of, some of the things I have. Now, here's a jar of honey that my wife got while she was in Bulgaria. She brought that back. She got a few jar. She brought a few jars of these back. I'm gonna try that today. It's not necessary. You don't need sweet things, you know. But what the heck? If you don't eat for three days, two days, why not, right? Now, I will say, during my fasting period, once I finish eating, that last moment, right, where I take that last bite of ice cream or whatever it's gonna be, I know I'm gonna look at the clock. And I know like today, it's Monday, and it's gonna be like 1.30 or two, right? I'm not gonna eat again until around 1.30 or two on Wednesday. I'm very strict about that. 
okay? What I will do once in a while is I might have what amounts to be this or half of this of salt water. So I either eat the salt by itself and drink distilled water. I like clean water. If you have spring water or a good water source, use, use that. Or I just mix the salt into the water. So I definitely recommend pink Himalayan salt. It's got all the you know, minerals in there. You definitely want to have all the minerals. But you also want to have potassium chloride, okay? Potassium chloride, KCl, NaCl, right? Sodium chloride, NaCl with all the minerals. And then potassium chloride, KCl with potassium chloride, okay? This restores your body's electrolytes. This allows you to fast for a long period of time. If any of you have a lot of weight, like I used to have another 91 pounds on me, okay? I could not have worn this shirt. It would have ripped, literally, if I, if I wore this stuff six years ago. It would have literally ripped. Um, I lost all that weight, 91 pounds. Well, I lost 60 pounds in about three months. And then I lost the balance of it, the other 30-so pounds. I lost that in a period of a few weeks, all right? You can do the same thing. You just got to stop eating, okay? If you're overweight, it's, it's, much, it's really nice if you're actually 50 pounds overweight. If you're 100 pounds overweight, you'll find that your body will just consume itself. And it'll give you a, a, an amazing feeling if you'll just be patient and get past the uh, first four or five days if you want to go that route. Um, when I did my fasting, I, I fasted for 10 days at a time and I ate a steak and a salad on the 10th day, on the 11th day really. And then I did that again. And I did that until I lost 60 pounds. It took me about three months. So I ate three meals a month. Three meals a month. And my meal was a steak, like maybe 10, 12 ounces, and a salad. And I'm not dead, obviously, okay? So, when this all boils out, I've got my water boiling. I'm gonna share something with you. So, my wife got back from, uh, she went to Istanbul and Turkey and stuff, and she, she found this amazing uh, tea. It's just really fruity. So she, I've never tried this before. Well, I mean, I ha I've had this bag, but I'm just saying, uh, this is amazing. So if you can get some kind of, it's got all kinds of flowers. It's got oranges, it's got cinnamon. You know, I'm sure we have some in the States, but I'm just saying, I got this. And so I cooked this a couple of days ago, and I made myself a big pot of it. So now I've got this in a jar, okay? This is in my fridge. There's maple syrup in here. It's ready to go. I can just drink it. It is really strong. That's why I like it. Um, if you were a guest at my house right now, I'd probably suggest that you pour it half full and add water. It's very strong. So this is, you know, a concentrated version of it. Same thing here. It's cold. I guess this is about maybe almost a liter. So I'll get to that. But right now, I'm going to head over to the kitchen and I'm going to, I'm going to get this cooking. In fact, here's what I... We don't even need this, okay? I mean, we don't need this. I just like to keep them on there as a way to store it. But you can see, this is three-year-old ground beef. Let's see if I can, there we go. All right. Can I do this? Almost. It's gotta play with it a little bit. Don't kill yourself. This goes in the trash. Look at that. And I can smell it, it's kind of gnarly. It's gonna be good. <laughs> All right. Okay, so that's stewing away, as you can see. And I'll share with you something else now. I like to, we have a local shop here. I like to get these things, they're called lakums. Uh, it's, it's Turkish food. Uh, it's like just like, a, sometimes they use roses or, 
Like in this one, these pomegranates, pistachios, they make a puree out of it. It's really good. I'm going to open this up shortly. In fact, I'm going to open it up now. And I'm getting ready. So this, uh, this ground beef is sauteing away. Maybe it's going to take about 15 minutes. You guys won't care because I'm just going to edit out all this stuff. But I want to share with you here. So <clears throat> this is my sugar fix. I'm not trying to eat a lot of sugar. I just eat what I want. And again, today's Monday, so I'm not going to eat again until Wednesday, 1, 2 o'clock. If y'all came over to my house and said, let's go to dinner, I would stick it out for another five hours so I can wait until dinner time. Sometimes I'll do that. However, if you came over and said, hey, let's have breakfast, I'd be thankful. I'd say, great, let's make it a 42 hour fast, right? So that's how I do things. So I just want to share with you, you know, my, my thinking, my attitude, how I look at this. Um, once you go a, a long period of time and fast, you realize you can do it. It's not hard. Fasting uh, for 16 hours, that's not fasting. That's not intermittent fasting. I don't know what you call that. Maybe they call it intermittent fasting. It's not fasting, okay? Fasting is minimum 22 hours. And I would suggest to you, if you want to try it, you're kind of intimidated. An easy way to start fasting is to simply figure most of the things you want to eat in a day. And I would just suggest to you that eliminate things that just take up a lot of space in your stomach, like bread, pasta, things, you know, potatoes, you know, get rid of the fluff, okay? Meat and fruit and roots, like radishes and things that are roots, onions, okay? Get all that together that you're going to eat for the whole day anyways and eat it within one hour. You eat all that in one hour and then don't eat again. Don't chew gum. Don't drink coffee. No beverages. You only get salt water or nothing. Then do that again the next day. That's fasting, okay? Eat one hour a day and skip the 23 in between. That's the minimum you should be doing if you're going to be fasting and have uh, some effectiveness to be effective, not waste your time. So here's my Turkish delights. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open this up. This is Maybe I shouldn't eat this first. huh? I haven't eaten. You're looking at a person who hasn't eaten for almost 58 hours. I'm not on life support. I'm happy. I'm getting ready to eat. All right. Yeah, I'm demonstrating my cooking skills here with boiling water. Didn't have to go to school for that. So what do we got? This is my coffee, my French press. All right, so now I'm gonna let that sit. I like to stir it up a little bit. I didn't rely just on the French press. Stir it up real good. All right. That smells really good. That's cardamom, wow. That's amazing. So. I'm going to let that stew for a while. So I've got ground beef over there on high heat, almost high heat. Ground beef is sauteing. I figure it's got another 10 minutes to go, but here are my jalapenos. I should probably get some more in there. Well, we'll see. I like the fresh ones, but I happen to have the jar. And then this is, these are the spices I was telling you about. Just put them in here so that way I can just dump them in when it's ready. 
All right. Notice I haven't taken a bite of any food yet. <laughs> There's all this food around me, okay? I want that ground beef and I want my, uh, my uh, taco shells, right? They're not the best. It's a little stale, but I can stomach it. So I'm going to do that. Aha. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and open my uh, evaporated milk. And I drink the whole thing, so I'll drink right out of the can. Sometimes, sometimes I have a little bit too much. It doesn't fit in the coffee, so then I just drink it out of the can. It goes in the trash. Recycle, whatever. That's the nice thing about, you know, if you're going to eat so much food at once, you just finish the whole dang thing, okay? It doesn't go in the fridge. <laughs> I love going to the restaurants, and I, I get all this food at the restaurants. I order like three or four or five, sometimes five entrees, and I get three or four appetizers, and lots of times I eat the entire dessert menu. And, uh, so, and lots of times I bring my own food. I bring in dried fruit and peanuts and some things that, you know, I bring in my own salt, and they look at me funny and they wonder if I'm going to wait. I'm waiting for some people to come in, you know, and, but no, I'm going to eat the whole thing. Usually if I go by myself, I mean, if I go by myself, I'm not going to, I'm not going to hinder people and take them with me and watch them sit, you know, I'm going to sit there for 90 minutes and eat, you know, nobody, nobody likes to do that generally. Uh, so, so a lot of times I'll go eat by myself. Um, and the people in the restaurant think, uh, I'm waiting for somebody or they're, they're thinking I'm going to order all this food because I want it to go. And they're always asking me, sir, would you like this to go? And I'm like, no, I'm going to eat it here. And I do, I eat everything. I don't leave a thing on the plate. So. So what I do is that, that ground beef is dried up pretty good, okay? It's reduced, it's getting pretty sauteed. So I'm just gonna dump a little bit of tomato sauce in there, tomato and basil, and then I'm gonna put all this stuff on the plate and uh, show you guys. I might put some shredded cheese in there too. So.
All right, I got my shredded cheese ready to go. And my new box of stale taco shells. The other, the other one was an old one I had in a Ziploc bag in the pantry. Those were less fresh than these, if I, if I want to use that word. So, let's see. I wanted to show you this coffee here, too. So anyways, I'll bring it out in just a second. Okay, y'all, now this is most of that jar, okay? <clears throat> I'd say two-thirds. So I'm probably going to eat the whole jar. Usually I leave a little bit left, but I'm thinking today I'm going to eat the whole thing. So I got my shredded cheese. And you know what? That's all you need, really. So the, the way I look at the coffee is I should probably get some. Yeah, I'm going to use the honey. I'm going to try the honey this time, not the maple syrup. I think we're out of maple syrup. That's it. So... What I want to do is I take this honey. Oh, look at that. All right, that's for the coffee. Okay, you think I put too much? Is that too much? Sorry. <laughs> All right, so that's for the coffee. Now what I got to do is I got to filter that. Sometimes I just, sometimes I just boil coffee grounds. I, I put hot water, and then I use a uh, measuring cup, and then I let it settle out. I have a Turkish coffee maker too. I mean, you don't need, you don't need to filter it. But anyways, if you can see, I'm gonna go ahead and there we go. And I also like to put the evaporated milk in there, but do all this at once. This is another way to do it where you, it cools. If I do it this way, it cools. So I'm going to leave a little bit so I have space for this. The evaporated milk. I should probably try it first, right? Nah. All right, so there's my coffee. That's, that's getting ready. But, um, all right, so I should try this, huh? Hey, it's just nachos, right? So I just break the taco shell. You would say, well, John, why don't you just make tacos? Eh, I could do that too. Whatever. All right. Man, that's good. Lots of spices. Almost made it to 58 hours. Next one, next fast will be about 48. Hmm. Yeah. I remember one time I was eating like a maniac and I had brought, you know, just a jar just like this. Now people just think, you know, you're going to get a, a portion of it. Like, you know, maybe that much. I just put my fork in there and I was eating the whole thing. 
And this woman was sitting across the table from me. And she was staring at me. A friend of mine. And she finally said, I'm just wondering if you're going to eat the whole thing. Which I did. What? You can use my truck. Put gas, please. All right, so John, you have to edit that out. Thank you. Drive carefully, Mitchell. All right. It's better with the nachos, but I'm not complaining. It'll work. Normally I have a mug. I should probably use my mug. Yeah. This is for tea, but... So yeah, I'll drink this whole thing, okay? So this is one liter. I look at it as a glass of coffee, a cup of coffee. Then, this is probably a liter. I'm gonna drink this too, and I will probably drink this also. Same, it's the same tea, it's just a different jar, probably. It's quite a bit of fluids. If you wanna be able to eat more food, just don't, eat, don't drink fluids. You don't need them. You really don't. You don't need coffee, you don't need tea, you don't need none of that, any of that. Just eat fruit, fresh as you can, and red meat, generally. Yep, it was good like a thought. That's the first time I tried it with sugar. Oh yeah, so. So my entire eating time generally is 90 minutes. I really like to make it as short as possible. So my general rule is don't eat for more than four hours at a time. Once you're lean, once you're lean, you got the weight you want, don't go over four hours. But I like to be cruel to myself sometimes and I typically will, if I am only fasting for one day, which is very unusual, I will not exceed one hour. I usually try to get it in the 30 minutes, which means I don't have room or space or time for fluff. I need to eat some a steak and I'm done, right? Or a cucumber and a steak or something. But for every day of fasting, you can eat for an hour. So if you fast for 48 hours, not 42, but two days, 48 hours, Give yourself two hours of eating time. I don't. If I fast for two or three days, I try to still go for the 90 minutes. You can do it. You can eat enough food, have enough calories. I think the calories I, I pretty much consume are five and 6,000 calories maybe when I eat. You can eat more because what will happen is your body will start doing everything that it's supposed to do. It'll start working properly. Don't listen to your doctor. Most doctors are idiots. Don't listen to your doctor. Don't Google the internet about fasting and listen to morons that are just, look at the ends, ends of the articles. They're trying to sell you something. 
How do you sell somebody something if he's fasting? What's he going to buy from you? Right? So you got to lie to him and you got to tell him that in order to be effective at fasting, you have to buy this product. Bullshit. Don't do it. You don't need prescriptions. You don't need drugs. You don't need drinks. No, you don't need protein shakes. None of that stuff. Just eat clean food and eat once a day in a short period of time. If you're like me, um, like one day I just saw my gut in the mirror. I'm like, this is sick. I used to be an athlete. And I was a full scholarship distance runner in college. And about six years ago, I looked at myself in the mirror. I'm like, how did you get that gut? And I thought, I really thought this through. I thought, the one thing that I'm doing that's causing that is putting food in my mouth. It's so simple. So I thought, I will stop doing that. I literally had that conversation with myself. It's not sophisticated, guys. Stop eating. You don't need all the food, especially if you're fat. Oh, man, that's good. Coffee, cardamom coffee, Turkish. It does no good to show you unless you know the language. <laughs> I mean, but basically, okay? Try to keep the air out. You don't want things oxidizing while it's waiting for your next time you're gonna eat it. So anyways, uh, then after about four days, I knew I could eat, go without eating for like four days. I had done that before because of stress or whatever a long time ago. So I figured, yeah, four days. And I started feeling sick. And I was drinking water, lots of water, too much water, too much water. You don't drink so much, you don't need so much water. You don't need, your body has all the water. If you're fat, your body has all the water. Each fat cell has 65% metabolic water. Your body will break it down and use it where it needs it. You don't have to do anything. So I got to go check the rest of this stuff. So, what I did is I just, on the fourth day, I, I was looking for help. I didn't have anybody to talk to. So I thought, I'm just going to go look up on YouTube for fasting. Fasting. All right. So, Put the rest on here. You can see some of it burned a little bit, but I like it that way. No problem. So I go searching the internet for fasting. And I found this crazy guy in Alberta, Canada, Cole Robinson, and he had this channel called Snake Diet. And the one thing I got right away, <clears throat> once you get past the uh, shouting and profanity, the guy's crazy, but he knows what he's talking about. He saved my life. Um, you get past all that, and what I discovered is that if I just drink the salt water, it's going to restore my body's electrolytes, and I'm not going to put myself in a dangerous situation. That's the problem. If you don't understand about restoring your electrolytes, you put yourself in a dangerous situation if you're fasting and just are stubborn, right? And you go for so many days without food. And then one day you eat a whole lot of things at once. That can kill you. So <clears throat> I forget what they call that, that condition that you're, I, I, I understood it at one point. I just don't remember it, but who cares, right? Just 
use the salt water, restore your electrolytes, and you can fast as long as you want. You can. You can actually fast with the salt water. You can fast until you're thin if you want. I didn't do that. I don't, and I didn't want to do that. I stuck to my plan, so. Just stick to your plan. But once I got the salt water idea, it was actually pretty easy. It was because I was angry. How, how could I let myself get so fat? I mean, I used to be a star distance runner. I know a lot of y'all were way faster than me if you were athletic. But I think in high school, yeah, in high school, my best mile was four minutes and 40 seconds. And then because I was a distance runner, I wasn't really a miler. There were so many better people on my team. So I wasn't the best person. We had a really good team. But um, we, would, we would race a two mile. And my best two mile race was uh, nine minutes and 58 seconds. So that's running two consecutive miles in under five minutes each. So I was, pretty, I was pretty good, and that was good enough to get me a scholarship. And that's why, you know, after not paying attention, and that's what happens. We don't pay attention, and you look at your big gut in the mirror, you got to own up to it. you got to take responsibility and say, okay, well, I made myself a real fast runner, and, you know, I got money for that. and I did that, and it was really hard. Not eating is easy compared to that. I busted my ass to get to, you know, being able to run that fast. That was hard. That was hard. Night eating is not difficult. Get that in your head. It'll save your life. Fire your doctor. He's a moron. She's a moron. Ask yourself, is your doctor out of shape? Is your doctor fat? Stop going to them. Come on. Have better standards. Have better standards for yourself. Okay? Why are you talking to a financial advisor? Is he working by the hour? Is he rich? How much money has he lost trying to become rich? You want to talk to those guys, not somebody who's never taken a risk. Okay, I'm telling you firsthand. I was in super physical condition. Let myself get overweight, out of shape. I had skin problems. I had allergies. When I completed the fasting, not only did I lose the weight, it restored my skin. My wife is jealous. She puts everything on her skin, coconut oil, whatever. Hoba butter, I don't know, whatever it is. It's still not as smooth as my skin. And I'm not trying to have smooth skin. I'm just saying my skin is very healthy. It's because I only eat once every two days. Somewhere in there. I could do without the sugar. I could do without the coffee. I don't need that, the honey. It's not hurting me though. Okay, where you get into problems is you're eating too frequently. That's the problem. It's not what you're eating. You guys can't, you can't do this by just deciding you're not going to eat sugar. It's going to take forever. It's agonizing. Just stop eating. Your body will fix everything. Just stop eating. Stop going to your doctor. Don't do what your doctor says. How do you think we got here? People have been here for about a quarter of a million years. There's a record of human beings on Earth for 250,000 years, roughly. How do we survive? Pills? You know. I might just actually eat that whole jar. It's looking that way. So... When I stored that ground beef, 
It was about 1.6 pounds, 1.66 pounds typically. So normally I only eat a pound of meat, a pound, 16 ounces of red meat. Lamb sometimes, or sometimes I'll have a combination of salmon. Uh, salmon or tuna are the best fish for what you want, nutrients. But if I'm going to do that, then I'm going to have one or two burgers, big burgers that come with it or a steak that goes with it, you know, second entree. But I can eat one and a half pounds of beef. I don't want to, want to make this too light. I think I got it just about right. So. You ever see anybody chug coffee before? I just do it because it tastes good. I'm not in a hurry. What you'll find out is if you want to stick to a discipline like that, when you eat, you won't want candy. You don't. You don't want crap. I do sometimes eat a chocolate cake. Not a whole cake, but I mean, you know, sometimes I'll eat like a quarter of a chocolate cake. I love chocolate cake. It has to be really good, though. I think... Lots of times you can't avoid the soy, so just just avoid soy. We're going to talk more about that because this is my introduction, so I want to tell you more about what I'm doing. I also get a key lime pie at the bakery sometimes, or my wife will make them. I'll eat half. I'll eat half of a regular size key lime pie. To me, that's like eating a, a glass, of, drinking a glass of lemonade. Is the way I look at it. You know, I'm getting lazy. Right? I'm just gonna scoop it in. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what will happen is you'll start wanting really high quality food. If you're doing that, why would you not want anything but grass fed uh, top sirloin, or not top sirloin, but um, beef tenderloin, right? Chateaubriand, filet mignon, right? You're gonna want like a tomahawk ribeye, something really good, a really good high quality cut of meat. And you shouldn't care about the price because you just save your life. Look at the price. If you eat crap, the price is not what you pay at the store. The price is what you pay as you get, as you get older, right? As you live your life. And you incur the problems from eating like that. That's the cost. A lot of you, many of you asked me about 
money and financial risk, then I skip past the most important one, which is your health. Because my thinking is, well, I've always done that way, but how am I qualified to talk about health when you ask me about money? People don't make the connection. But if you don't have decent health, what difference does it make how much money you have? What are you going to do? Become the bionic man? If you don't know, I'm 55 years old. Most people think I'm 38, 40, 42, something like that. And that's nice. I'm glad. I feel like that. I feel like I'm in my 30s. I mean, especially because I goof around. I'm very mischievous, as you can imagine. I'm very mischievous among the people that you know live with me, my family. They tolerate me. I finally tucked my wife into biking with me early in the morning. <clears throat> so she's out biking with me and I wasn't paying attention, so I was way far ahead, you know. So I look back and she's not there. So she's not there. So instead of slowing down like I would normally do, I ditched my bike and myself behind the, the bushes. So when she came riding by, she didn't see me. And I popped out and scared her. So that's how I do things. Everybody around was laughing. <laughs> so I'm a goof sometimes. People will try to talk you out of fasting. I could be wrong. Look how fat they are. And they will have an excuse as to why they're so fat. Don't listen to them. They've already disqualified themselves. You don't need other people's approval. You don't need my approval. Look at what I'm doing. Think about it. Do it. Try it. At first, I lost like two or three pounds a day. After about 10 days, I was using the scale. I don't now. I have not looked at a scale for like five years. I don't care. I feel great. My clothes fit great. My, I can see my abs. If I can see my abs, everything's good. Who cares what my weight is? If I can see my abs, my gut doesn't hang over my, my belt. Right? So after about the 10 days or so, I would con you know, continue fasting and it was literally 0.65 pounds a day that I was dropping. And then there was a period of time where it must have been almost a week, no weight dropped, no weight. But I was, my size was changing. I was getting smaller, but I weighed the same. So I was like, I'm going to keep on going. I don't care. I don't care. I know that putting food in my mouth makes me heavier. So as long as I stop putting food in my mouth, I don't care what the scale says. And yeah, after, you know, five, six days, whatever it was, I resumed the loss of weight. So your body will decide what it's supposed to do. I remember in junior high school, my coach would say, there's no such thing as spot reduction. I mean, we're kids. Eighth grade, seventh grade, Coach Mueller. And he was in shape. I mean, coaches back then were in shape. He had muscles, he was an athlete, he was athletic. He knew every sport. And he said, there's no such thing as spot reduction. He said, you can exercise, you can build up muscle, you can, your body will decide 
how it's going to be shaped. It'll decide where the fat goes away from first, how, it, you know, how it's removed, how it's deposited. You can't, you can't know that. <clears throat> and that always stuck with me. And I've always, I've always seen that. I've always had that validated. You just have to, you know, have a decent diet and try to stay active. Everybody's going to have, you know, slightly different results. Don't talk yourself out of the benefits you can have from fasting. Don't search the internet for a bunch of idiot strangers who don't want to sell you crap. Do it. Try it. Take a chance. Hey, worst case scenario, you and I are nuts. At least we're probably going to be in the same facility. Right? You owe it to yourself. <clears throat> I have to thank <clears throat> I have to thank my son for uh, tolerating my impatience. He set up this whole camera thing so I could film it. I don't know how he learned all that stuff. I don't think I want to know. I don't want to learn all that. I just want to know that I can call him. <laughs> Get with some friends that are as crazy as you and challenge them. See if you can go three days, seven days, whatever. With no food. You can even do it if you're skinny. I'm saying why? Okay, yeah. You'll get in you'll improve a lot of aspects of your body, your skin and all this. I'm talking about if you're overweight, okay? Take some drastic measures. Do something different you never tried before. Try a three day fast with only salt water, no gum, nothing, no coffee. And have your friend do go with you. Much easier. I'm a weird kind of person that I can do things in a vacuum like that. But it does help to do things together with other people. I wasn't totally in a vacuum. What I witnessed was when I was fasting, I witnessed people that I would see intermittently like every few weeks. They would look at me funny. And eventually they just said, did you lose a lot of weight? <laughs> you know. And then we kind of had the conversation about what happened. I went into my acupuncturist where she had been treating me for like 50 allergies, okay? It's this N-A-E-T, if you want to check it out. It's electrical. You hold these electrical electrodes and the path, the, uh, the allergen, you hold it in a vial and then it, it clears it from your body's nervous system. I don't know how it works, but it takes about one day. So <clears throat> lots of times you can clear groups of allergies, which is what I understood. I got to have some of this tea. So anyways, I was through a process, it took me a couple of years, where I had cleared 20 or so allergies. I had like maybe 20 or 30 left, something like that. And, and I had stopped going. It was, it was, she was out of the city, so it, it was a, di a distance. So I, I just got out of the practice of going to see her. Because, <clears throat> you know, my allergies weren't so bad at that point, right? She got rid of the, the worst ones. So anyways, after I had lost all that weight, I came back in and I walked in her office with, uh, with my wife. We came in the, the lobby. Oh, yeah, that's that fruit tea. So we came in the lobby. You know, sometimes you, want, you don't want to be embarrassed and ask a stupid question. So when I wasn't, like, paying attention, she asked my wife, is that your husband? Is that, a new, is that your new husband? She thought my wife had divorced me and got somebody else. 
Because, you know, it was like, it was, a, it was about maybe a two-year period, maybe a year and a half, something like that, right? I don't know. Who knows what she was thinking? <clears throat> you know, my, my wife explained, no, that, that's, that's John. <laughs> you know, and she wanted to know what I did. And so then I sat there in the chair and we, we, we recalibrated all the uh, testing because I hadn't been there in a while. And she tested me for everything from the beginning. And she, she, she ran her equipment again. She said, hey, there's something, I got to do this again. So I'm sitting there going, okay. So she runs everything again. She says, you don't have any allergies. What'd you do? I said, it's what I didn't do. I stopped eating. I stopped eating so frequently. Then I explained to her kind of what I'm telling you. You couldn't believe it. So, it's fun. It's fun to tell people because they saw it. <clears throat> I don't talk about it. I just did it. And then people can see that I did it already and they're not going to argue with me. Who's going to argue with me? I didn't talk about it so I can wait to see what their reaction was going to be. I just did it. Deal with that. There are the results right in front of your face. That's why when you guys ask me for help with stuff, I've done it already. I'm not going to experiment on you. Sometimes there's a new application I have to try, but basically everything I'm doing has already been, it, it's just part of the practice. How are you going to argue with that? <clears throat> well, people will. <laughs> people will. I guess that's human nature. That's okay. Look, make something real simple. <clears throat> I'm going to say lose seven pounds, lose three pounds, and do it in a real short period of time, like over the weekend. I mean, if you have to, go camping with no food. <clears throat> go out camping, get your fishing pole, not so you can catch fish and eat them. <laughs> go camping. Fill up a bottle of uh, salt water, just one bottle. You don't need a lot of water. You need no water, okay? Make yourself, put yourself in a situation where you can't just go to the refrigerator. Guys, think this through. Make it easy on yourself. When I was training for um, hiking, Trying to, trying to find out what I can do, right? What can I tolerate? So, after I'd finished eating one day, <clears throat> it was time for me to go out and test out my gear overnight. I use a hammock and a tarp. Uh, camping. We don't have any challenging terrain here in Florida. It's flat, you know, dry, sandy. <clears throat> Anyways, so I go out in my gear, my boots and all this stuff, whatever. For us, only five miles. Hike out five miles, set up my camp, go to sleep. I timed it so it was just I could do everything right at dusk. So anyways, when I leave the house, I'm completely thirsty. I mean, I want two glasses of ice water right now. And I said, no, I'm going to go hiking. I'm going to stay overnight and I'm not bringing any water. And I did not. I did not bring a water filter. I did not bring water, no food, of course. <coughs> and I was so thirsty. In fact, I was sorry that I did that. When I set up my, my tarp, my hammock, I was thinking, John, you're a dumbass. You should have brought some water. You should have brought a filter. I knew I wasn't going to die. Anyways. I'm telling you the stupid story because I want you to understand. 
You can try it yourself. But what happened was I managed to go to sleep. I got up in the morning. It didn't matter. I could have had a half a gallon of water the night before or no water, which I had no water. And it would have been the same. When I woke up, I was not thirsty at all. It didn't bother me whatsoever. Why is that? Because my body decided <clears throat> where to break down cells to get the water for me. So while I was sleeping, it did that for me. I didn't have to do anything. Okay, guys, <clears throat> your body will take care of you. <clears throat> when I was fat, I had all this rough skin. Maybe it was called eczema, I don't know. You know, just <clears throat> like an athlete, you know. But I wasn't an athlete by any stretch. So, after the fasting, what happens is your body begins to eat itself. <clears throat> it's called autophagy. <clears throat> and uh, it eats the thing it doesn't need, let's call it the most, the thing it needs the least, <clears throat> which is... Um, Call it, let's call it skin conditions. <laughs> Your body will eat the skin that's not good. It'll grow the skin that's good, like that fifth layer, okay? It'll make it look like, it'll make it the seventh layer. <clears throat> you don't need surgery. You don't need drugs. Just stop eating. Drink the salt water. Go walking. <clears throat> walk an hour a day slowly. Don't walk. Don't walk to the like during recreation or entertainment. Don't consider that exercise. <clears throat> when I when I'm talking about walking for exercise, deliberately make it exercise and go out and walk for 20 minutes or more, an hour. And walk slowly. What will happen is it will build, build up your abs, your abdominal muscles. Ideally, if you're really fat, walk for four hours. You get up in the morning at 4 o'clock. What? Get up at 4? Yeah. This is your life. You only get one body. Right? Make it count. Get up at four. You earned it. <laughs> That's what I used to say. John, you earned it. You made yourself fat. You earned no food today and tomorrow and the next day you earned it. And I owned up to that. You can do that too. <clears throat> Get up at four and go walk in until six o'clock or eight o'clock. Well, there's my liter of coffee gone. <clears throat> it's in my stomach, uh, I guess. I still have to finish my evaporated milk. <clears throat> As you can see, it's about what I was telling you. <clears throat> this is about, <clears throat> excuse me. I say this is about a fifth of that jar, a fifth of it. Roughly, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to finish it off. If not, I'm just gonna you know <clears throat> give up. <laughs> I guess that's enough food, and uh, I'm gonna save it for later. What the heck. <clears throat> Any wagers? <clears throat>
Can I eat it? The whole thing? <clears throat> Don't bet against the house, right? I'm the house. Even though I've had all this food so far. I haven't even begun. I got my Turkish delights over there. I have tiramisu. Ooh, I didn't show you that yet. <clears throat> and ice cream. Now, <clears throat> I wrote a book when I started <clears throat> doing this. I started compiling a book five years ago called Steak and Whiskey for Breakfast. And since then, I changed it to Beef and Bourbon for Breakfast just because of the alliteration of it. Beef and Bourbon for Breakfast, okay? <clears throat> so for five years, once I would eat all this food that you're watching me eat now, I would have about three or four shots of bourbon. And I stopped doing that about three months ago. There's no need for that. It's estrogenic. If I'm not going to eat soy, why would I have bourbon? That, that does the opposite. So what I want to do is I'd rather have more testosterone and less estrogen, right? So I'm not going to have soy. So I'm not going to drink so much of this. So I didn't drink this today. This has been sitting on my counter for a few weeks. I actually, <clears throat> I make light, light fixtures out of these. Another story. But anyways, this is Woodford Reserve Double Baked. It's, I like it. It's pretty good. You can get it at most bars. <clears throat> I'm not saying, you know, I don't drink, but you should. I'm not saying that. But if I drink some bourbon or something, I, I'd rather have bourbon or whiskey, but um, I'm not going to, I like red wine, but if I'm going to drink something, it's going to be bourbon. Why not? Right? Why not just have the liquor? Um, and the high quality stuff. Right? <clears throat> That's not the highest quality. I could spend a lot more, but why? I just get something I like. So. I think I'm going to save some of this ground beef. <clears throat> I have eaten <clears throat> so much food before where I actually didn't feel good that is possible so you do have to have some common sense you have to know your body a little bit but I mean I eat quite a bit of food it's shocking to people but once you do this you'll realize it's not shocking what's shocking is you take all the food you might see me eat and you eat it throughout the whole day what a waste of time that is So <clears throat> the thing is, when I save food, okay, <clears throat> if somebody else wants to eat it, I hope he likes jalapenos in the ground beef. <clears throat> if not, guess what? It sits there until I go to eat again, which seems like a long time. And when I go to eat again, maybe I don't want to eat the same food. So it might sit there for a week. And that's why I don't like to have leftovers. I like to try to eat everything, you know. <clears throat> but that whole jar of ground beef, I mean, dang. 1.6 pounds of ground beef. I, I figure I ate like 1.3 pounds. Okay, I'm not going to complain. <clears throat> and probably my son will eat it. He eats a lot of food. He'll eat a dozen eggs. <clears throat> He's skinny too. Very muscular. <clears throat> I think he's more than me sometimes. When he was like 12, he's 17 now. So he saw me fasting 
and he decided to fast. Well, when he did that, his metabolic rate increased. You'll find that your metabolic rate increases when you fast. It doesn't decrease. Don't listen to these idiots and your doctor on the internet. Uh. So we get taller real fast. So, just keep that in mind. You can fast if you're pregnant. You can fast if you're a child. <clears throat> From my little girls, from their, when they were 7, 8, 9, 10, <clears throat> I started limiting their eating window. Not fasting, but I want them to be aware of when they're eating, okay? Don't let your children eat whenever they want. Make them have some discipline. They don't even have to fast. But for my, my girls, I, I told them they can eat whatever they want, for breakfast, even cake and ice cream. I still want them to have some eggs and stuff like that, but I'll let them eat cake and ice cream for breakfast. But they got to have, you know, some actual food as well. And uh, they can only eat in an eight-hour window. Eight-hour window every day. That's plenty. You don't need to eat from, you know, eight o'clock in the morning till 11 o'clock at night just before you go to bed. You should never do that. So... It works out good. That way, they have some awareness, some cognizance of having discipline with food. That's a problem. People don't have discipline. I love going to a, a, my favorite restaurant with my family. And they're ordering all the good stuff I love. And it's not my day to eat. And I go with them because I like to be with my family, right? I go with them. And the waitress says, sir, what can I get for you? I said, nothing, thanks. Except, can you bring me a lemon and some water? You can drink lemon <coughs> lemon water. You can drink lemon water. That, that will not give you an insulin response. And you'll, you will not break your fast if you drink lemon water. Okay? Just don't eat the pulp. Don't put sugar in there. I didn't say lemonade, you food addicts. I said lemon water. So, yeah. I will sit at a restaurant, my favorite restaurant. I've done it many times, and everybody looks at me and they wonder what's going on with that guy. He has no food there. <coughs> and I'll be drinking lemon water. Okay? It's worth it. It's worth it to be the weird, different person. Mm. So if I want to stick to my schedule, I've got 35 minutes. I still have a bucket of ice cream and tiramisu I didn't even show you guys yet. Who does that? <clears throat> if you think about it, evaporated milk is more efficient. I think you're getting all the, the fats and nutrients in, and with less water. I mean, yeah, it's processed, but still. <clears throat> Your best milk is raw milk, though. You guys probably know that. But it's hard to get. I almost want to make some more of that coffee. It's so good. Well,
So, See what this tastes like. I've had this before. It's so good. <clears throat> you know, <clears throat> you can have a lot of fun once you get the hang of it. I love going to restaurants and I order the dessert menu first. Everything. I mean, if it's a big restaurant, no, I'm not going to do that. But I'm saying two, three, four desserts, no problem. I get all that first. And then I start ordering entrees. They think I'm nuts. <clears throat> it's just fun to watch people's face, their reaction. So. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Check it out. This is not a, spa a paid sponsorship. I'm just saying I like it. Mm. That was good. By the way, this does not count as fresh fruit. If you're beginning and just trying to lose weight, <clears throat> don't eat fruit. Steak and vegetables. Only. Lean. Don't cook it in oils. You don't even need butter. <clears throat> Use water. Put your raw steak in the skillet with water and cook it. You don't need butter. <clears throat> All right. So. You can see me looking around and make sure I didn't miss anything, right? Maybe we should have National Fire Your Doctor Month. If you see these idiots wearing face masks still, <clears throat> usually it's the older people <clears throat> because they do, the, they do what their doctors tell them. So I guarantee you it's the dumbass doctor telling them to do it. We need to fire these quacks, all right? Especially the fat doctors. How can you be a healthcare provider if you're fat? You're in poor health. Look at your Department of Health. Look at your people that run the Department of Health in your city, in your state, in your county. Are they out of shape fat people? Stop setting them money. Vote out the budget. Don't, don't allow them to approve the budget. <clears throat> I'm going to say there's probably three peaches in here, okay? Guys, it's not that hard. You just look like a crazy person if you can eat the whole thing.
I am talking, but <clears throat> normally I don't. I just want to eat. Sometimes I'll have like two forks. Literally, I'm doing this. So I'm just talking because I want to share some of the stories with you. But my other, my next videos, <clears throat> I'm going to go into some other, you know, technical details maybe. Um, there's some other things like, for example, um, the benefits of taking a cold shower or a cold bath. Not being covered at night when you're sleeping. Um, sunlight. And another thing. I'm going to talk about this. Okay. When I'm finished eating, I don't have a spoon of sugar or something. I have like something really sweet, like this um this thing here, right? Okay. So I'll eat that, and then I'll drink a teaspoon or a little bit more than a teaspoon of turpentine. And that sugar and the turpentine draw out any um, parasites in my tissue. Now, I've done that so much, I, I don't have any. I'm cleaned out really good. You can also do it with fasting. It just takes longer. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, fasting will do it. So will vinegar. Okay, you fast for a day or two. You drink some vinegar. A little, little teeny tiny amount. A couple of tablespoons. Um... That'll clean you out. So will um, castor oil. Mm. Castor oil. Oh my gosh. If you can go, like when I get into the third day of fasting, I'm cleaned out. There's nothing in my intestines, okay? Not to be gross, but this is real stuff. If I had then. You don't have turpentine then because your, your system is empty. You don't want to have turpentine on an empty stomach. <clears throat> but what you can do is down a tablespoon or two of castor oil. Castor oil will clean out your intestines. So there may be, may be still food in your intestines that's been there for months. Castor oil will get rid of it. So will vinegar and continued fasting. So if you want to fast for seven to ten days, I encourage you to do that because you will really clean out your intestines. You will... Get rid of things that have been there for years, probably. I know it sounds gross, but. Any more wagers? <clears throat> you see, I'm not struggling. Mm. I got to show you what I'm eating next. Mm. If I don't do this now, I'm going to put this jar back in the pantry and I'm going to regret not having this tablespoon of honey. I love this stuff. Ugh. I'm going to do it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Oh, yeah. Mm. It's got like an orange. You know, it's got that orange flavor. No. I know what it is. This honey is from the blossom of the linden tree. So like in Florida, we have orange blossom honey. It literally is made from orange blossoms. And the only reason why I know is because my, my wife told me. Hmm. It tastes a little like citrus, but it's from the linden tree in Bulgaria. Oh, it's good. And now I had that tablespoon and I'm not going to regret it.
and that's another thing too. <coughs> when you're fasting and you look at food and you remember how good it tastes and you just want some, you got to remind yourself that it ain't going anywhere. You can make more. It'll be there next week. You don't need it now. You're not going to miss anything. All right? That's what I most of the time did. I just told myself, you know what? Like my wife would make some fantastic thing. <clears throat> and I'm like, ah, oh, I just started my fast. <clears throat> and I got a whole week. <clears throat> and I would say, you know what? She'll just make it again. It goes away. Your desire for it goes away. I mean, mine did. You got to train yourself a little bit. You got to have some patience. A little patience. Okay. If you're in the middle of a fast and you want to push it like 10 hours, what you do is you talk yourself into not eating <clears throat> until it's time to go to bed. Now I'm talking about a one or two, three day fast. <clears throat> now there's some other tricks I'll share with you later <clears throat> when you want to get longer fasting and still have good sleep. You want to have good sleep. You don't want to sacrifice your sleep and there's some tricks I can show you. <clears throat> well, what you'll do is and many people have shared this with me. I've shared this with the clients individually. I'm sharing it with you for the first time. <clears throat> you talk yourself into not eating, and then you go to bed, and you lose consciousness, right? You go to sleep. And the next morning, you wake up. It's all fresh and new. Your body's rejuvenated. Maybe you're hungry. But you just pushed another 10 hours because you took the ride you know, of sleep. You're not thinking about food for 10 hours that you're sleeping. Unless you're not having a good night's sleep. You know, that's another matter. I'm not going to drink all the syrup. I don't like it that much. I just want to eat the... Uh, does that count, guys? Did I finish the whole jar? <laughs> the kitchen it was perfectly clean before I began eating <clears throat> if you go in there now it looks like the neighbors came over and we had a party <laughs> and I was the only one eating this whole time <laughs> so I'm going to do this now, but I'm not finished eating. Okay? I just want to show you, don't drink too much. More is not better. You can kill yourself. Turpentine. I'm just going to show you what I'm doing. I'm not saying you should do it. This is probably a teaspoon. I didn't want to spill it on the table. Now, I drank that because I've just eaten so many sweet things that there's enough sugar there, you know, so the turpentine will draw out any parasites. I don't think I have any. This, this, this turpentine I don't like. <clears throat> the other one that was called G Diamond, if it's still in, in manufacturing, it's still being manufactured, get that. This one, it has a real bitter taste. The, the G Diamond turpentine was more of a minty pine, a pine flavor. It's more of a pine flavor. This one is sort of like a rancid pine. And it's perfectly good. Ugh. I mean, it's good for you, but... It doesn't taste as kind of like sweet like the other one was. So anyways, I've got everything over here. So I've got a little tea now. Oh yeah, that'll get rid of that taste. All right. Tiramisu in a cup. <clears throat> it's funny.
if people go eat, <clears throat> to breakfast with me, they can tell you. So I'll go to my favorite Cuban cafe when it's time to eat. Now remember, <clears throat> it'll be when I haven't eaten for two days. Usually around 48, 50 hours. And so <clears throat> I'll order for breakfast like $65 to $80 worth of food. And I eat it. Plus I bring, I bring my own food. I'll show you in a minute. What, lots of times what I bring. Like I bring my own salt, but <clears throat> I bring dried fruit. You're not going to get that in a restaurant. I bring the, like the tea like this that I make, or I bring my own coffee. Now, at the Cuban restaurant, I'll order like <clears throat> two, what is it, cortaditos, right? Two, three of those cortaditos, and then I have like a two cappuccinos. I mean, I have like four coffees or something, four, four or five coffees. <clears throat> now, I, I drink them all. You saw me just drink two liters of fluids just now, Okay. Anyways, <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty good. Tiramisu in a cup. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you can tell, probably, <clears throat> I almost feel high. I don't get high. I don't take drugs ever. I'm just saying, if a person's high, it's probably the way I feel right now. <laughs> Look at it that way. Like I feel buzzing. All that sugar. My body's trying to process that. <clears throat> But that's all it's doing. It'll do that for another, you know, four or six hours. <clears throat> and then my, my blood pressure will start to come back down and Blood sugar starts to come back down. And I'll be so smooth for the two days. It feels so good. So relaxed. You guys see me on videos. Many times you're seeing me on video. And I'll, I'll have not been eating for two days. I mean, you could probably tell if I've just eaten. <laughs> I probably talk a lot faster or something. Hmm. And I'll tell you more later, but my, my general rule of doing things for myself, just I guess it comes from research or something, and I couldn't tell you the reason why I do this, but my general rule is I will lift weights, I will exercise, all kinds of things, you know, heavy exercise. I'll do that within the first 36 hours of beginning my fast. After that, I'm not going to do heavy weightlifting. I might do some, you know, ab work or push-ups or something like that. But nothing heavy because I don't want to be catabolic. I don't want to break down the muscle tissue. I want it to be I want it to be anabolic. I want to conserve the muscle tissue. And that's what fasting will do. But if your body is you know, it's hitting that two day cycle that you've been fasting or three or four days or whatever, and you start putting a load on your muscles, you're probably going to start breaking down Uh, muscle tissue. Now, I don't know what the exact numbers are on it. You can, you can do the research on it. But just keep that in mind. So, I won't do any heavy weightlifting when I'm beyond 36 hours into the fasting period. But I do lift weights every day in almost the same exact muscle groups. And it does build muscle. Um, but I don't have soreness the next day. I don't lift to where I'm sore the next day. That's the key right there. All right, so... Now I'm gonna get some ice cream. Yeah, what'd I say? Yeah, ice cream. That's better. All right, y'all, so. This is 14 ounces of green tea ice cream, Haagen-Dazs. My freezer is full of it. Like if you look in my freezer in my kitchen right now, you're only gonna see this. Remember, remember those cartoons of Popeye the Sailor Man? And when he opened his cabinets, it was only cans of uh, spinach. Well, that's what my freezer looks like, except it's Haagen-Dazs 14 ounce, 
you know. And I'll usually eat one of these. Sometimes I'll eat two. Now this time, I wait till Publix has it on sale, of course. Um, but this time I've got uh, quite a few coffee and chocolate ice cream ones. Most of the time I buy green tea. I don't know why, I just like it. So, and you can see, if you look at my uh, flatware drawer, you can see where I really bent up some spoons trying to get out my Hagen dazs <laughs> I do like this, and if I get the wrong angle, the whole thing snaps in half, and then I bend it back. <laughs> so, this is probably a restored spoon. I use the big spoons, not the... I think I got everything. Yeah. That's cold. All right. I'm going to get one more of these guys. How long have we been doing this? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we're at an hour and forty minutes. So I'm over my ninety minutes, which I don't care. Not a big deal. See, think about it like this: <clears throat> once you get this dialed in, you get lean. And let's say you want to fast for 90 minutes. I mean, uh, eat. That's your, that's your, your, you know, breaking the fast period. You're going to eat for 90 minutes. Your blood sugar is up as high as it's going to be. Your blood pressure is up as high as it's going to be. And it's healthy. Nothing wrong with that. And it's going to be like that. It's, it's reached a plateau, okay? So as time goes on, it's going to come down, your blood pressure, insulin, all this stuff, right? It's coming down, right? So let's say within the, the two hours after you stop eating, your, your insulin's way up still, okay? Two hours. If you were to eat something, something small in that two-hour period, technically you're not really changing your fasting. You're just adding a little food, and it doesn't change your body's period of uh, insulin reduction or whatever. So it's kind of like, you know, cheating a little bit. I'm not saying you should be looking at that, but just keep that in mind. When I, when I stop eating, that's it for me. I'm just going to be nothing. Now, the only, thing, the only thing that's difficult for me is if I get really thirsty, and sometimes I get impatient because I'm trying to do work. Right? I'm, I'm trying to focus on something, and when I'm really thirsty, it just bothers me. So there's a couple things I'll do. Like I'll go take a shower, I'll go in the pool, or maybe I'll brush my teeth, and that gets rid of the thirst. If I don't want to drink, like if I, if I want to dry fast, which we'll get into that later. But lots of times, I'll just get like a big glass, a big jar, and I'll put ice in there and some uh, distilled water. And I just drink that down. And that's good enough. The next day, I'm not eating anything, right? So I'll probably have a little salt water. Just a small amount. Maybe half of this glass, right? Like this volume right here, salt water. I, and I got this to a point now where I don't even need water in between fasting. If I wanted to, I could just, I could just get all my water and my food when I am breaking my fast in my 90-minute period and never drink anything or eat anything in my fasting period. I can do that, no problem. That's called dry fasting. Now that, I would, lose, I would actually start losing weight. I don't want to lose weight. I want to be right where I am. I'm five feet, nine inches. And I probably weigh 142. I have a 31 inch waist. I had a, and it's loose, a 31 inch loose waist. When I was at my peak of weight, I had a 40 inch 
waist size, and it was tight on me. It was squeezing my gut. I probably had a 42 inch waist. So, those are my numbers. But yeah, right now, okay, so when I'm done eating, I probably weigh, I probably went from 142, I'm gonna say I gained six pounds. Just now, since you've been watching this, you watched me gain about six pounds. Okay. Come Wednesday, I'm going to be back to where I was before this video started. I'm not sure what else I can add. <clears throat> I think I'm good. I'm going to finish this. Fruit tea, whatever you want to call it. I don't even know the word for it. It was made in Istanbul. And I'm going to finish this green tea ice cream. And not put anything else in my mouth until Wednesday afternoon. Unless one of y'all call me up and beg me to eat breakfast with me on Wednesday morning. Then I'll, I'll cave in and do that. <laughs> Instead of wait till Wednesday afternoon. Man, this is cold. I can't talk after this. Ah. So. <clears throat> I guess I gotta put it in the refrigerator. Yeah, I think I got it all. Didn't miss a thing. I'm not going to show you now, but later. I'm going to show you my abs when I have been fasting. So you can see the difference. But now that I've eaten all that food, you can start seeing it. <clears throat> my stomach, you know, it's like kind of like a little bit of a bulge. But I feel good. I, I can be completely active. I can go out. I don't feel tired. You know how when you eat something and you feel sleepy? It's the opposite. When you've been fasting and your system's cleaned out, and you just flood it with all this food, you get this rush of energy. Like, I want to do stuff. I want to go bike riding, you know, whatever. Y'all want to watch me eat the rest of this? Uh, nothing special here. Or you just don't think I'm going to do it? Okay. All right. I know. Some of you skeptical ones out there. <clears throat> You want to see if I'm going to eat the whole thing. You think I'm going to put it back in the freezer. Like everybody else in my family, I hate it. I get all these cartons and they'll eat like a third of it and put it back. And it just stays there because then they go get something else. And finally, I make them eat the rest of it. You know, Stop opening new ice cream. Go finish what you started, you know. So, because, okay, so I've, I've had about half of this, so I got to put back in the refrigerator because it has maple syrup in it, and I guess it'll get rancid, I don't know, that's what I hear anyways, I don't know if I can put it back, it doesn't have sugar in the maple syrup, it's pure maple syrup, so I think it, I think it gets rancid, I don't know, you guys can correct me, mm. Mm. this is really sweet though, mm.
Should I have some bourbon? I'm going to have some bourbon. I know some of you out there say, yeah. All right, I'm going to have some bourbon. Why not? Right? I happen to have some bullet bourbon on hand, just happen to have it. As you know, I already finished my Woodford. So, it's bullet bourbon it is. just tell you I stopped drinking this <clears throat> you know it's it's estrogenic mix it into a girl <laughs> if I have to say it that way it's estrogenic so the thing is guys look I could literally drink the rest of this that's like Kool-Aid okay after I drink all this food I could drink this half bottle it's kind of stupid to do that. Don't do that. But anyways, don't put that much stress on your liver. But since the title of my work is going to be Beef and Bourbon for Breakfast, okay? And breakfast doesn't mean the food I eat in the morning. It means the food I eat when I break my fast. Get it? Breakfast? Huh? And none of y'all are fasting. You don't deserve breakfast. You can't even have breakfast if you're not fasting. If you're not fasting, don't say it's breakfast. <laughs> it's the food you're eating in the morning, okay? Gotta control myself. Gotta have some discipline. Put this away for another day. Maybe. All right, enough of that. <clears throat> enough of that. Ooh, that's pretty good. Bourbon and green tea ice cream. Man. That's all I get. That's all I get. <clears throat> when this video is finished, I'm not going to eat anything else. This is not a trick. You're, this is the real deal, right? So today's Monday, September uh, 18th. Actually starting to feel full now. I'm starting to feel it. Push it up. The camera's playing tricks. <clears throat> Anyways. I've got to get ready for some calls. I'm going to end this recording. Trust me. <clears throat> I am going to finish this haagen in about four minutes. <clears throat> so. That'll be the last thing I eat. Until Wednesday. 
at around one, something like that, 47 hours, somewhere in there. I hope this helps make your life better. <clears throat> I hope this helps. It helped me. All right. Thanks for watching.